Fearless and truthful. Provocative and controversial. We say it like it really is. With dignity and respect. Committed to free speech and common sense. Upbeat and entertaining. Straight talking and direct. We may agitate each other and you. Thought provoking, provocative and controversial. Hello and welcome to a brand new season of The Pledge. This week, a beluga whale, and no, that's not Nick, was discovered in the Arctic <laughs> Sea wearing a harness fitted with a camera mount, sparking speculation that the animal was an escaped trained Russian spy. Russia has denied any wrongdoing, <laughs> and so far the whale has refused to talk, <laughs> which is not a problem on The Pledge, where we know how to have a whale of uh, a time. Oh. Good thing. Good. Coming up, June says Britain shouldn't be rolling out the red carpet for Donald Trump. Nick's got hold of some top secret information about the Huawei scandal. Michelle wants to end Britain's big class divide. And I think we should investigate our links to the slave trade to learn from the, from the past. But first, it's Carol. Rape is a vile crime and the only person to blame is the rapist. So we need to make sure we convict the guilty, acquit the innocent and see to it that no one is accused falsely for reasons of spite or vengeance because women can and do lie. But this week's hysteria about digital strip searches, which objectively translated means a consent form that gives detectives access to texts, emails and social media posts, is crazy. It'll stop victims coming forward, scream campaigners. No, what stops women coming forward is a criminal justice system that doesn't take rape seriously and where the majority of reported rape cases never get to court. We live in a digital age. Social media is a roadmap to our lives, and if looking at it backs up or disproves a woman's story, then it needs to happen. If it doesn't, I don't believe our criminal justice system will ever get it right, either for women whose lives have been ruined by rape or for men who've been falsely accused of it. Carol, we often uh, disagree <laughs> on this show. Yes. We do. Um, but I have to say, I am completely shocked that you would take this view on this issue. In the, It makes no sense at all. At the end of the day, in an era of Me Too, in an era we are, where we are trying to protect people's privacy, whether that be what's going on with uh, some of the social media platforms, I don't understand why you would want us to invade the privacy of okay. victims in this way. Can, can I just okay. finish? Okay. And also, how did the police investigate these crimes pre-mobile phones? At the end of the day, they do not need to go and look at people's mobile phones to be able to ascertain whether or not a crime occurred. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm sorry, if this becomes common practice, of course it's going to put victims off because perhaps there may be other incriminating evidence in that phone that has nothing to do with the crime that they are reporting. Okay. Let me tell you first of all, this is common practice already. Police do this already well, and they can do it. Be. Well, let me tell you, it happens. It's been happening for a very long time and they can do it without a warrant and without a crime ever having been committed. The only thing that's new here and that's been introduced this week is a consent form that police have to sign. The idea that, that, you, that, that a woman can say something without evidence, without it being backed up, and a man be convicted for it, which we have seen many times last year. Many men were falsely accused last year, which is why this is happening. The we idea know that rape, rape is one of the most difficult crimes to convict, well, if not, you look at well, the statistics. It, 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 so it, it, that it, it, is it, it, not it, it, the case. Well, if it's difficult to convict, surely you'd want to make it easier, because I think this could actually help more men be prosecuted because if a woman has been raped she's going to make a record of that either to a pal on email or on a, on a text to pals it's going to be there conversely if she has already had sex consensually with the guy which is what happened with a guy called Liam Allen last year who was accused of let me finish you and I'll let you finish who was a guy called Liam Allen who was accused of raping a girl last year and police sorry the 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 the, the, the guy the prosecution refused and to hand over the texts saying that this girl had had consensual sex with this guy and enjoyed it. Liam Allen went through two years of absolute hell over this and, and, and his life was in ruins because of it. So okay. if you're saying it's OK for men to be falsely accused, I don't think it is. Neither Let me do just I. One thing, hold on, just one thing, of course, uh, Liam Allen was subsequently acquitted, just to make that point, mm -hmm. and it's the victim who signs the consent form. I'll get involved in a minute. Can I just say one last thing, then I'll hand sure, it over? Sure, sure, sure. 
at the end of the day, what you're saying still makes no sense to me whatsoever. Because, well, you, okay. because at the end of the day, we accept that husbands can rape wives. Yes. So therefore, you could have consensual sex one evening yes. and it be mm -hmm. rape another evening. Okay. So your point here is none and void. Okay, it makes so no if you, sense. If you don't accept what I say, why anyway, don't we, why don't we to listen you, to what... Why don't we listen just very quickly to what Nick F. Graves says. He's from the Met Police. He gives a balance to this, which I think makes sense. We've worked really hard in the police service over the last 20 years or more, actually, to raise the confidence of people who are offended against to come forward and report. And the last thing we want to do as a service is to put barriers in the way of people that want to report these types of crimes to us. But equally, we, we, we've seen what happens when we get disclosure wrong. We have potential miscarriages of justice. You have trials that don't proceed at the last minute because these sorts of things were not addressed properly previous to the, um, during the preparation for the trial. So what we're trying to do in the police service is right those wrongs, but also protect the, the rights and entitlements of um, complainants and victims. And it's a very tricky balance to strike. Surely what we need here is a degree of balance. You don't want a situation where every single vulnerable woman who yeah. presents herself, a police officer can just demand, slam a table, and he or she says, give me your mobile Correct. phone. But I'm sure, because you're a very sensible person, just as you would want all possible evidence found to convict, so you must surely of allow course. all possible evidence to actually I acquit. That. Yeah. And the case that Carol referred to, and it's, it's not a solitary case, it's not a solitary mm. case. There have been a lot of mostly young men <laughs> whose lives are put on hold for and two, that. three years. And I so accept that. I accept that. I think it's a middle ground. But I don't it shouldn't want to... be mandatory, that's what I'm saying. No, but there but should be not. the power that if a police officer feels and they can make a case and it could lead to an agreement, I think we have to be able to go there. No, I, was just, I wanted to bring Michelle in on this. OK, so um, what I think is that justice and truth depends on evidence and rape is probably one of the worst things that you could do yeah. um, to, a, to another person. And I think we need to just get a bit of context. So these national consent forms, what they are now in place for is for... It's not just for rape or sexual offences. It's to allow the police to get access to digital um, information where they need. So you said, well, what did we used to do before mobile phones? Well, then it was irrelevant because pre-mobile phones, mm. we didn't need access to digital devices, but we all now interact interact on our telephones and the information in those telephones could help convict um, or, or free someone that's innocent either way. So my problems with this are, um, first and foremost, it has to be balanced and fair. I have a problem with a blanket mm -hmm. um, yeah, consent right. approach. Yeah. 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 I think that you should only need information when it's relevant to the case, point one. Fair, fair enough. Yeah. I think point two, one of the flaws in this strategy at the moment is they're taking way more data than they actually need, Correct. which makes that me uncomfortable. Or they can process. Yeah. yeah. And it's and, causing delays. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. they have a point on there where, which says that if they find information that basically points to any other criminal activity, they can investigate. So, for example, <laughs> and I'm being flippant, Maybe if I've been texting my friend that I've nicked something through a self self-service checkout, am I going to then find myself getting done for theft in a supermarket? Well, maybe, maybe, found maybe and hopefully... I ask, imagine. So I, I, I've got a question, but before I ask my question, I, ju I just want to say this is such a difficult topic and I'm glad that I didn't say anything up until now because clearly um, there are women on the panel that have strong views as well. Um, and it's just for a man in this position to have this debate, um, it, can, it, it can lead in the current social media climate to all sorts of accusations mm -hmm. of insensitivity to women or being a rape apologist and the words yeah. that get thrown around on social mm -hmm. media. Exactly. So I think the first point I'd like to make is that, that that isn't the way we should conduct this debate, and I'm happy it's not happening here. Um, the, the question I had was that when they ask for... Um, for, the, for, the, for the woman's phone, uh, surely if the messages have been exchanged between the woman and the man, surely those messages would oh, be on the man's phone. phone as well. So uh, that's part of this uh, that I don't understand. And it does relate to the case of the acquittal, uh, because he was acquitted... Uh, for, I forget his name, the chap that was acquitted... Liam, Liam Allen. Allen. Liam Allen was acquitted um, because they found messages to him on her phone. But I don't but, understand why they weren't on his but phone. He said, consider the yeah. prospect of... You can oh, get deleted messages. Consider the prospect of a woman yeah. who has been raped yeah. uh, and she doesn't want to tell anybody, but she tells her best friend mm. on a text. Yeah. And she says, something terrible happened to me last night. I yeah. was out with such and so. That would help the woman's case. Mm. So yeah. it's not about... It's not just yeah, about but, helping but the, the man. But as for my question, the the does anyone know the answer to... No, I don't know. I don't know, but you could interview the friend. If she says, I said 
blah blah to such and such a friend. The police could interview but, the friend but, to you know, find out. You know, if that we, were the case. we live in a digital age, and I said in the intro, our phones, our tablets are a roadmap to our lives. And so, if there is evidence on those phones that a woman has been raped or not, mm. I think we have a duty to have a look at but it. If there's evidence for other crimes, well, to Michelle's if point, you, if you're nicking things, no, but well, maybe you should be prosecuted but as well. nicking things has no. nothing to do with being raped. So if you've committed a different crime, there's no but, reason why you shouldn't be able to report a crime of, of, the a, problem, of sexual you assault the problem for that, fear of being convicted of something the, else you've done. Do you see the problem the police have when a woman comes in and says she's been raped? And this is this this throws to Madge's point. You know, I'm not. A, I'm not an apologist for, for rapists, but if a woman comes in and says she's been raped, up until fairly recently, the woman's word was accepted with very little evidence, and that was that was what the CPS were criticised for a couple of years ago. Um, if, if that cannot be right, a man cannot face jail just on the say so of a woman with no backup evidence. And if that evidence exists on a phone, surely we have a. But Carol, you just <coughs> said how low the rates of conviction. Terrible are. rates. So what you're saying is not happening, is it? And most rapes. It's not happening. Most rapes, I understand, <clears throat> occur between people that already know each other. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and so therefore the the assumption there, like in June's example about the husband and wife couple, um, uh, the assumption there would be there would be plenty of messages already exchanged. Mm. I don't know, again, again, it's an open question. I don't know how that will uh, lead to a specific case of on that particular night where the allegation has been made a rape occurred. Mm. If they already know each other, and in particular if they were already in a sexual relationship prior, but I think there's a really important point that we quickly need to land as well, is one of the reasons that they've decided to standardise these forms and roll them out is because they did a review of all ongoing rape trials yes. have to look yes. at whether or not there was enough evidence to secure a conviction mm -hmm. or let someone off. And it was based on that that they realised yes. that they didn't have um, standardisation and all the rest of it across all of these cases and that they needed more information, which is why we've got to which this is point. Why, yeah. anyway, okay. Thousands of cases being reviewed right now.